He was supposed to go there for 14 years. But he tells Sumatra, when you go, let them bathe in the Ganga. They are in the forest now and bring them back home. He says, Lakan Uramasiya Ani Hukeri, Sanchaya Sakala, Sankucha Niveri. He's saying, He says, do bring Lakshman and Ram and Sita back. But Lakan Uramasiya Ani Hukeri. He says, setting the rest all the doubts and scruples. Set aside all the doubts and scruples. The scruples refer to all what you're supposed to do. Give that a goodbye and bring them back home. Sometimes a man lives with lots of scruples, but when he is in a jam, he himself breaks the scruples. The same thing that he is adhering to at one point in time, and asking everyone to adhere to that because of the reverse of the situation he wants to break what he has he doesn't want to honor that anymore because he is in a very tight situation such was the situation here so we look at the role of the king as father and as the king as the king you have to uphold all the whatever is to be done according to the law. But as father, the emotions are completely different. So Tulsi Das tells us in this Doha. So he tells, he tells uh, Shiram what the father has said. And this is the way he says. Respect whatever you want to do. 
He says, Kari binati payadha parehu din habana jimiloi. Having said so, he supplicated. He bowed in reverence and fell at Sri Rama's feet. And Tusida says, Din habali jimiloi. Bal. Bal is, is a baby, a child. He began to cry like a baby. Because he knew for a fact that Sri Ram would not change his mind. He would not go against his father's word. And because of that, he knew he would miss him. And besides that, he knows the king cannot live without him. When you love your child, you, you, no matter what happens, you don't want to be separated from them. You give your life for them. And he knows the king. He is near and dear to the king as his advisor. The king treats him very well. And he knows that his king cannot undergo the separation because he indicated that to him. That's why he told him, let them take a bath and bring them back home. And Sumantra knows that the king to be, Sri Ram, will not change his mind. And we will hear what discussion he had, what was his response. Tosidas tells us in Chopai. Father will surely reach his demise. 
because he can't live without you. But act in such a way that that place does not, is not bereft of a king, a ruler. So he's putting forward very subtly that he should come back to take charge of the kingdom. Act in such a way, such that a yotel would not be rulerless, so to speak. So in a very subtle manner, he puts that to him. He said, Mantra hirama utai prabodha tata dharma manu tumha sabu suva. He says, Rama raised, you know, remember, I told you he fell at his feet. He fell flat. And he began to cry like a baby. Sri Ram, in all his compassion, lifted him and held him. He knows he is in pain, not for himself, but for him. The one who is to be aggrieved is okay. But the witness is more aggrieved than the person. So he understands. He could empathize with him and see the pain that he is undergoing for me. He takes him up and he hugs him. He says, He says, friend, you have examined in your role as advisor to the king, you have examined all the principles of dharma. The principle of statecraft you have been part and parcel of enunciating those types of rules and regulations. So you're fully aware of what is right and what is wrong. You see how nicely Sri Ram puts it. In a very, very simple and loving tones, he says, you are indeed familiar with statecraft. Then, in as much as you are familiar with that, you understand what principles to uphold. And Sri Ram addresses it now. In this part, he gave a little bit to tell him that you are indeed familiar with statecraft. Now he continues and he advises to Siddhartha Stanislav. Leaders 
how they handled the situation. He said, Shiva, or Shivi, the great king, a great ruler, the Dichi, and King Harishchandra, they endured countless afflictions for duty's sake. For the purpose of upholding duty, they went through all the rigors, and they never folded. So as advisor to the king, take an example. They were great kings, but if they had folded, then their kingdom would come to ruin. But they maintained the honor and dignity, regardless of what the problems were. And that is the hallmark of a great leader. Regardless of what comes, he finds a solution. You know, the difference between a leader and a follower, the leader is somebody different because he has ideas that are far beyond the normal man. That's why he's put there. Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of people where they're supposed to be. We have a lot of misfits. But the man who is supposed to be a leader has to be a man with far-ranging qualifications. He must be able to see beyond so that he can plan ahead. He can take his nation forward. He knows what's, what's a, what are the important things for his people and for progress. So he's saying that these people, the Dichi and uh, Shivi, Harish Chandra, they were very profound and great leaders. And regardless as, as to what was thrown to them, they were able to counteract the effect of those things. So Sumantra, let us take a role from them. Even though my dad has found himself in that situation, he could get over that. That is in essence what he's saying. He says, Ranti Dev Bali Bhupa Sujasan Dharamu Dhadevu Sahi Sankatanana. He continues. He said, the wise king Ranti Dev. Ranti Dev is a, a great king, a noble ruler. And Bali, he says, they kept their faith through many trials. Through many trials. You see, you can't give up. The very nature of a great leader is to stand there firm, with a firm conviction that I can override all these negativities. These negativities. 